Councillor Osborne. Question number one to the leader, please. Um, Madam Mayor, thank Councillor Osborne for his question. Um, this was in Mary's school. I, as the answer states, it has benefited enormously from the support given by both this council and the diocesan board, and the school has improved enormously. But, of course, we recognize that the school needs to continue to improve. The, all our schools have an improving record, and 37% of our schools are outstanding. Again, we are not satisfied that it's only 37%, and Council clearly continues to work with the schools to raise standards. As far as the offer from Evening Standard is concerned, my view is very simple. If there is an offer from a well-meaning organization to help us improve the life chances of young people, it is right that we should take that offer. The offer was re request, what, requested off Evening Standard by the head teacher. Evening Standard have given it. It is the head teacher who has initiated this, and the school is happy with that. I think that should be quite right that the school takes on that opportunity. My point to Councillor Osborne would be that would he rather chir be churlish about this? Would he rather look at this gift horse in the mouth? Supplementary. Councillor Osborne. Yes. Um, but first of all, I am asked a question in the answer. Do I have leave from the Mayor to answer the question, first of all? Uh, because I'm asked, uh, uh, do I uh, welcome this support? I ask the Leader of the Opposition to join us in welcoming this support, and indeed, of course, I do join the Council in welcoming this support. But with reference to um, the last sentence that the Leader gave us, let me ask this question. Does he not agree with me that if someone does give you a horse, it's always a very good idea to have a very, very good look inside its mouth? Um, a, a wise way to test a horse, I think you'll find, if you know anything about horses. Um, and in this instance, I do wonder whether anyone has had a very, very good look inside the horse's mouth. But I have an additional question for the leader. If we can get this money from the Evening Standard for this school, have we entered into any discussions with any other newspapers or the Evening Standard to see if we can get similar sums of money for the other schools in the borough who might need, uh, be in need of assistance in the same way? Thank Councillor Osborne for his supplementary. I think the saying about gift horses makes a distinction between horse and a gift horse. And that is exactly why you don't look at a gift horse's mouth, because that is free. You're not buying it. Um, but that may be semantics. Can I suggest, Councillor Osborne, that, as I said in the earlier answer, this is a request from the head teacher to Evening Standard, embraced by the school, generously given by the Evening Standard. This is an arrangement that has been done outside the council's normal requests to others to help with our schools. I am happy that the head teacher has been able to get this support. I don't see any need for us to ask other newspapers to join in. But let me tell you, if there are requests, if there are gifts to our institutions to improve the life chances of our young people, I will not refuse to take those. Councillor Grimston. Uh, thanks, Supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Does, does the Leader share with me a sadness that yet again uh, the Leader of the Opposition has failed to take an opportunity to praise our local education authority? Uh, functions consistently uh, recognized as being uh, among the best in the country, uh, choosing instead to focus on one particular uh, school. And does the leader uh, 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 care to uh, put right that uh, thing and indeed to uh, perhaps uh, uh, suggest to Councillor Osborne that while he continues to take this opportunity to denigrate public servants rather than praising them, some of his other statements about public service are not going to be taken seriously. Thank Councillor Grimston for his question. I could simply say yes. In fact, in the printed answer, I quote from the Ofsted report, which recognizes this council's uh, education department or children's services department in doing wonderful work with our schools. Councillor Osborne. Question number two to the leader, please. I thank Councillor Osborne for his question. As the, as the answer states that a very small number of the original number consulted have failed to return the forms. The Council is working hard to make sure that those do not have 
have not returned the forms are contacted so that the forms are or the information is put into making the right decisions. Supplementary. Councillor Osborne. Um, can I ask the leader then, is it not the case that there have been, uh, as a result of the changes in the personal care uh, charging structure, first of all a number of owed, overdue cases, um, and secondly some cases of people who appear to be uh, landed in some hardship, as a result of some muddle and some misjudgment across departments at the town hall, and will he be holding the uh, cabinet member responsible uh, to account for that? Second supplemental, Madam Mayor. Councillor Nails. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, is it not a fact, uh, Leader, that uh, the fair access to charging policy was a, a policy of the last non-lamented Labour government? And would the Leader not agree with me that it's somewhat hypocritical of the opposition now to be attacking one of uh, its own government's flagship policies? Nails for his supplementary. It's interesting, isn't it? Because actually, I think whilst last Labour government was lamented, this particular decision was really a reflection of them grasping the nettle because the cost of aging and cost of care was getting unbearable and they did the right decision take took the right decision to introduce fairer charges that was one decision for which i think the last labor government might be credited councillor rabicek question number three to the leader I thank Councillor Rabicek for his question. Mr. Madam Mayor, this council has been very clear about its uh, view about the Northern Line extension and the benefits it would bring to the borough, and particularly that part of the borough which has for so long been you know, underdeveloped and not fully used. 25,000 25, jobs are promised and well over 10,000 new homes are promised in that area. What, has, what Council has made very clear to the developers in the area is that without the Northern Line extension, this amount of growth and this level of development cannot be sustained and cannot be allowed. Therefore, in fact, I also welcome the, the government's uh, support for the Northern Line extension. Supplementary, yes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, does the leader welcome the Chancellor's endorsement of the project? I thank Councillor Rabicek for his supplementary. In fact, we have been pushing very hard at any door to try and get wider support for the Northern Line extension. We have support from the neighbouring borough of Lambeth. We have the support of the Mayor for London. We, in fact, also have the support now of the opposition party elsewhere, and I think also across the chamber, if I may say so. Chancellor's announcement was very welcome because it does mean that we are now considered for further support, not only now, but in future years, for, for delivery of Northern Line. Councillor Belton. Um, perhaps the leader can correct me, but I thought that Chancellor's support was uh, offered on the basis that there was a commitment to the development of Battersea Power Station uh, made by April 2013. Given the announcement 24 hours later, that uh, Treasury Holdings was about to go into administration, uh, what, does he really think it's very likely that there will be a commitment, a bankable commitment in that time scale? Indeed, does he even think whether the ownership will be sorted out by then? Well, I'm, I'm asked to speculate about what might happen in 18 months or so's time. I have no way of uh, guaranteeing what will happen. Well, what is very clear from the Chancellor's announcement is that he He's at one with the council in seeing Northern Line as being the key to unlock development and growth in that area. The council is at one with this council in accepting that a Northern Line extension is necessary to unlock that growth. What I am also aware is that we have now at Power Station 
a, a site with a valid planning application, a much more realistic and a sensible planning application this time, and I am pretty convinced that whatever comes on the 12th of December when uh, the, the, the current uh, notice given to the owners is, is, is heard in the courts, we will get further development interest and I am pretty sure that any developer will want to take on the Chancellor's commitment to support Northern Line Extension and bring forward their plans to, to be in line with the Chancellor's requirements. Councillor Belton. Your next question. Mayor, uh, um, question number four of the leader. I thank Councillor Belton for his question. I think what Councillor Belton's um, question shows is that, in broad terms, the Labour Party is on the wrong side of this particular issue. It cannot be right that social housing is always seen by many as a dumping ground where there is no inspiration and simply people stagnate in the, in, in the homes they are given. We on this side believe otherwise. Supplementary, Madam Mayor. Um, Madam Mayor, I'd be interested in your views about this as an answer. Um, I say nothing about the policy, and Councillor Govindia is only assuming on what he assumes to be my politics about the, uh, what my view on the policy is. I ask him whether, which estate Councillor Ellis referred to in the newspaper article and what he made of the prejudices and illogicalities. For example, he talks about 20s, 30s and 40-year-old. There is no estate in the borough, as far as I know, where a majority of people of that category are unemployed, and there's certainly virtually no estate in the borough where 40% of them aren't leaseholders. So the, the insinuation here that unemployed people are out shopping um, and are council tenants is completely ill-founded and unbased. And I wouldn't actually mind if uh, Councillor Govindia would give me an answer. Which estate are we referring to and what does he think about these prejudices? If, Madam Mayor, I thank Councillor Belton for his supplementary. If he was that concerned about the particular identity of the estate, Councillor Belton would have taken an opportunity to talk to Councillor Ellis. As I understand it, they do get on quite well. Madam Mayor, on a point of order, on a point of order, um, I, I thought that one was allowed to ask questions and get answers here. Uh, because of the completely unsatisfactory nature of that answer, I will be moving the adjournment of the Council at the end of questions. Councillor Ellis, second supplementary. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, does the leader recall at the last council meeting we had a debate about housing uh, and in that uh, debate Councillor Belton referred to council estates as ghettos. Um, the leader may also uh, be familiar with the words of the Labour Mayor of Newham, uh, Sir Robin Wales, who described um, the social uh, housing sector as a race to the bottom. Now, it's also a bit of a long shot, but uh, the leader may also have read uh, in The Guardian last year uh, uh, an article by Polly Toynbee, the um, doyen of the chattering classes, <laughs> who was bemoaning the fact that um, uh, people on low incomes are unable to live in uh, uh, some of the more uh, expensive areas of town. And one of her justifications for that was, who would do the cleaning of Could the houses in the Could we have a question, Councillor Ellis? Uh, my question is, is developing, Madam Mayor. <laughs> Does the leader uh, agree with me that those comments are frankly patronising and deeply offensive? But of course, if they're made by middle class socialists, that's perfectly acceptable. <laughs> However. Councillor Ellis, I think that was your question. I I'm think you've given a question. I'm very closely to the end. I'm being heckled over there and graciously uh, interrupted by you. But th thank you, very kind of you. <laughs> However. If a Conservative has the temerity to suggest that all may not be well in the world of social housing, and in fact even suggests that the whole thing needs uh, looking at and, and redoing completely every again, those same middle class socialists... Councillor Ellis, you are actually making a speech, and I must ask you just to put that question. I think we know what the question is. Those same middle class socialists get on their high horses and in great high Ellis. dudgeon... Councillor Ellis... Does the leader please. agree with me that there is one word to sum that up, and that word is hypocrisy? I thank Councillor Elias for his supplementary. The truth is that 
I certainly in my many years on, on, on the council do not recall members on this side using words like feral or ghettos. I have to say that we have a very good record of uh, looking after our estates. Our tenants have regularly shown their, their support for our stewardship of our estates and have voted consistently to remain with us. Many of our tenants play, play a, a very active role in the management of their estates and in helping the council to manage those estates. The, many of our tenants have become homeowners or, or, or from the opportunities that we have given them. I have to say that on this side we have generally been working closely hand in hand with, with tenants. But turning to Councillor Ellis's other points, to say that it is wrong for anyone to suggest that one party or one group of people have the monopoly of talking about social housing and inspiring people who live in social housing. This side cares about the inspirations, uh, aspiration of, uh, of others as much as the other side do. Councillor Nichols. Question four to the leader. Councillor Nichols for her question. To say that right to buy, the last generation of light right to buy was a great success in this borough and elsewhere. In fact, it was such a great success that despite the early opposition from the party opposite, they have broadly embraced the outcomes of that last generation of right to buy. My view, hope is that the next generation of right to buy will open up the opportunities of home ownership to a new group of people and open up for them all the freedoms and all the choices that homeowners elsewhere enjoy. Councillor Nicholas, supplementary. Um, I thank the leader for his answer, and I would further like to ask the leader how he intends these changes can have a real impact for tenants here in Wandsworth. I think, I think the, 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 the real impact is to give them access to the choices that you and I have as homeowners. People see homes not only as places to live in, but as an asset for the future, as something to trade and move on if they want to, as something to bequeath to their children and grandchildren. That are, those are the choices that we all have. I don't see any reason why tenants should be denied those choices. And that is why I think the next generation of Right to Buy will help yet another group of people have those choices that you and I enjoy readily. Councillor Carpenter. Second supplementary, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, one of the uh, disadvantages of the original round of right to buy was, of course, that there weren't any replacement of the houses, and so as a result, we now have a very long waiting list and a shortage of social housing. Uh, will the leader guarantee that in this round of right to buy, each uh, unit that is sold is replaced by another unit of social housing? I thank Councillor Carpenter for his supplementary. I slightly disagree with his characterization of the first generation right to buy. Whilst the, there was obviously, as a result of a purchase by a sitting tenant of a home, a loss of a, a rentable uh, housing unit, the truth is that much of the assets were replowed into the housing stock to main, better maintain, bring back into use under well, not so well uh, repaired houses. And we have, by and large, 100% of our stock available for letting as and when it becomes available. Unlike many authorities which did not embrace right to buy, where they didn't generate the capital receipts and therefore they have housing stock which is not readily lettable when it becomes vacant. So whilst he is true in, uh, correct in part of it, I think he is wrong to characterize the whole thing as being a complete loss to the social housing uh, pot. The social housing as a result of capital improvements has improved immeasurably and our stock remains the, one of the best stock, housing stock in the country. As far as the second generation right to buy, the government has made the commitment and I, I truly welcome that because I do think that the proceeds of right to buy in second generation should be made available to the social housing agenda. I'm not so sure whether he would agree with the details of the social housing agenda that we have on this side because my idea of the social housing agenda does actually also include further uh, uh, creating stock for intermediate home ownership for those who want to part buy and part rent. 
Right, the time for questions to the leader is now over.